Tokyo Godfathers is a different kind of Christmas movie because not only does it take place in Japan, but it doesn't really focus on presents or Christmas carols and other customs we have in the West. Instead, it focuses on togetherness and kindness, despite how lonely and cruel the world can be. Satoshi Kon sees Christmas in a different light, and he looks past the commercialism and focuses on the humanity aspect. Tokyo Godfathers is a really smart, and multi-layered film that focuses on family and how it should come before everything else. <laughs> Tokyo Godfathers released in 2003 by the legendary Satoshi Kon. Everything Kon created is genius and Tokyo Godfathers does not disappoint. The plot is rather simple as it takes place on Christmas Eve in Tokyo. Three homeless people living in the streets discover a newborn baby in the trash. There's Hana, a trans woman whose dream has always been to start a family, and sees this child as a Christmas miracle. Miyuki is a teenage girl that ran away from home and sees the baby as herself, being another child let down by their parents. And Gin is an alcoholic gambler that lost his family. He just sees the child as a nuisance and demands Hana bring the child to the police. But beneath all this, the three end up finding a part of themselves they thought was gone. They also find out how desperately they all need each other. What surprises me about Tokyo Godfathers is that no matter how many times I watch it, I always find something new. I used to think that this was a simple film compared to Kohn's others, but now I take that back. This film is just as deep, if not his deepest. There are multiple easter eggs and symbolism that you won't discover unless you looked really hard or watched it multiple times. This definitely makes this a film you can watch every year and get something new out of it. I'll give you some examples that are minus spoilers, but they won't ruin the film. There's a moment where Gin gets attacked by a group of thugs, and up above them are windows that represent the two parties as life bars, just like in video games. Early on in the film, you can see pictures of cats right behind Miyuki, and this first shadows her backstory about her love for felines. Time and time again, Gin, Hana, and Miyuki come across coincidences that benefit them or other people, and these events push them towards their eventual fate. In most films, the concept of coincidences can seem cheap and just a convenient way to push the narrative forward. But in Tokyo Godfathers, it goes with the theme of fate and perhaps a greater being at work. After they find Kyoko, the main characters are given a sense of destiny. As soon as they accept their roles as godfathers or guardians, they find themselves at the right place at the right time and with the right people. And there's times where they'll just be out of harm's way, as if it was a guardian angel watching over them. This makes sense because you'll see angels and symbolism for them throughout this film. You'll also notice moments whenever a character isn't in possession of Kyoko, they'll no longer have a guardian angel protecting them. I find myself watching this around Christmas every year because I enjoy the visuals and it really makes you feel like you were in Tokyo on Christmas. This is actually a really deceiving film because it has a very simple plot and it does have to do with a series of coincidences but the amazing thing is it all works. It's not the typical plot device coincidence but instead gives a sense of something greater at work. Perhaps it was the magic of Christmas that made the homeless people happen to be in the right place at the right time allowing them to discover the baby. It's basically a variation of the Dree Wiseman story, but in modern day Tokyo. The animation is incredible. The characters have expressions that show emotions, but in a subtle lifelike way, rather than one you'd attribute to an animation. 
The film also really makes you want to visit Tokyo on Christmas. In the film when it snows, you can almost smell it, and you feel the stillness of the night. There's this cold winter vibe that goes along with the feeling of being in the streets of Tokyo. It feels very nostalgic to me, and maybe that's because it reminds me of Home Alone 2, or even Christmas in Yokosuka in Shenmue. Whatever the reason, I feel the urge to watch this every year around Christmas. And that's something special about this film, as they opposed to Cohen's others. This movie does a wonderful job of making the character seem human. This is not just one of those cheesy films that makes the homeless people seem wiser or nobler than the rest of us. Each of them is flawed, and we find out why they became homeless, and we find out about the baby's backstory too. And while these characters are flawed, they each have a redeeming warmth, and they bring a lot of joy to the film, which gives it a really fun feeling. You'd think a film about homeless people on Christmas would be depressing, but somehow it manages not to be. Something only Satoshi Kon is capable of. There's still some really sad moments, where the mood does change, but somehow it still manages to keep things on the cheerful side. The film is both really funny and very touching, and is really about the miracle of love in a world of harsh realities. You might have to be willing to totally suspend your disbelief and just watch it for what it is. You'll find that it's a really enjoyable film with a simple plot yet a deep meaning on how people think and behave. This is an incredibly detailed world, and nothing in this entire film is wasted. The smallest of details you'll find all have a purpose. Everything in the film is connected, and it's through this metaphor that Cohen is trying to tell us that everyone in our world is also connected. It's saying that even the people on the fringes of society have more in common with everyone than we'd care to admit. The film wants us to appreciate what we have, and what we can share with others. Also, that everyone is part of the same family. It's a beautiful Christmas message, and it's a beautiful film. And it's a perfect Christmas gift from the master himself, Satoshi Kon. Thanks for watching, and have a very Merry Christmas.